Praise the Lord. Thank you for the beautiful worship. Today, my subject is the call of God. The call of God for each and every one of us. So let us look into how God has called over the years, practically from the creation till the last man living on this planet, how he is called calling each one of us for a responsibility which God has planned for each one of us to perform. God is calling from Abraham to you, to the last man going to live on this planet Earth, to establish his kingdom. His call is to establish his kingdom. Today, the need of God saints to move into that level as a soldier of Christ with all that is God has given to you to establish his kingdom. That is the key. I, am, I will come and explain to you a little later the problem people are facing today through coronavirus and many other calamities which is going all over the world. Destroy the work of the destroyer. Each one is called and God has given us the authority and the empowerment and the spirit of God in us to do it and setting the captives free. Analyze each matter and find out what is my slot in that kingdom's work to be established. Do not look at your limitations, but look at the one who called you a God who made Peter the fisherman, the first pope. So don't look at yourself, whatever may be the position. That is why I am giving you an example of Peter. Peter is an ordinary fisherman. He not go into that details, but you know everything. But he, God made him a fisherman to be the first pope. So do not look at you at what you are or who you are, say yes, rest is his work. When we say yes, when he, I, I gave you example of the last time, Gideon and any, anyone, any of those apostles who said yes to him, then he transformed them, useful, made them useful vessels or tools in his hand to establish his kingdom. The one who called you is faithful. He will do it for you. The one who called you is faithful. That calling which he has given he is faithful. If we are faithful to that calling, he will fulfill his mighty plan for each one of us. Say yes and do your part and get your eternal reward of a, a life eternal. This is the eternal reward. With him who called you. There is an eternal reward. He has called you to an eternal blessing with him permanently, perpetually, eternally. A life rewarded in this world itself. Not only in that, because we have enough and time to study and pray and understand and ask the God, Holy Spirit to wisdom to understand what the Lord is speaking to us at, for this time. The Lord is very clearly showing us. He is calling us not to into suffering, into misery. The way to many of those things when we are entangled with the worldly system, these powers of darkness will hold on to us and create a problem for us. But when we are liberated, even though there may, as Paul has written and everybody else has written, there may be issues, but it will not affect you. I am telling you, our ability to overcome those difficulties and challenging times, God will empower us to do it. Even though there may be a mountain before us, the thorns and thistles before us, but we will be able to go over it without hurting ourselves. That is the provision of God for us. So may, people may be looking or we may be going through the same troubles as other, other people because we are in a way living with all the problems involved. For example, coronavirus. 
a servant of God may get coronavirus. There is no guarantee. But one guarantee is there. Whatever that is going to happen, we come out of the hospital without any problem. And li life of peace, joy, fulfillment and happiness, which is a promise of God for God's people. A long life, one. Second thing is a Sabbath rest, which is again a promise. They will see everything going well for them before they close their eyes. I, am, I will give you humble examples when I come into the biblical stories about each person which God has called to himself. Like Paul, he must be able to say to Timothy chapter 4 verse 8, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, that is why they are all included in that, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Now let us look into the Bible, how he was calling each one and what is our response to it. The call to Adam was to pronounce a judgment with compassion. All the other calls, the call to Adam was, a, was to pronounce a judgment with compassion. All other calls from Abraham to us is, is to establish his kingdom. Jesus spoke maximum about his kingdom in his teachings. If you know the, all the stories he was giving in different times, the parables he was giving, the examples he was giving, he came, he came to establish a kingdom and we have been asked to be part of that kingdom to continue the work which is unfinished in Calvary, establishing his kingdom in this world. Everything he has done for us but we have to be doing it to see that it is established during our time. Whatever area, whatever uh, uh, sphere of life God is giving, we have to be a soldier of Christ to establish God's kingdom. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord. God among the trees of the garden, but the Lord God called. That's the thing. Called to the man, where are you? That's the calling. He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. I am not explaining that fear factor and all that thing. I am trying to tell you something different here. So the Lord God said to the serpent, see the spiritual warfare started at that point. The enemy has taken over the world God created for man to live as rulers and authorities. He has passed that authority to the devil at that point. I am not going to explain. I have explained it so many times. But now the point I wanted to tell you is what is our calling to fight that fight which started in the Garden of Eden. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The spiritual warfare, the seed has been sown in the garden of Eden. Whether we want it or not, we are all part of that eternal war which is there till the last day. To Adam he said, by the sweat of your brow, all those problems have started. You will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are and to dust you will return. This is the story. Then God will never fail his plan. If you look at it, he unfolded another plan through Abraham. And then he, you see, we will go back to the dust, but one day we will all rise in, a, in body form and join him. Then God wanted people to live in this world, but that has failed, but God has taken finally in the body, we will rise, we will be in heaven with God. A place shifting, but God's eternal plan is fulfilled. The Lord called Abraham and said, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you 
and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. You know, I have, we have explained to you so many times. This calling, Abraham was very rich, very, very rich. But he left everything because one calling, one calling. So he, so today everybody knows Abraham. Who is Abraham? And all those promises God has given to him is fulfilled today when we look back. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. I was studying actually Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and all these people. Wherever God has given them a promise, where they have an encounter with God, God, they offered, uh, you know, they made an altar wherever there. That means an offering was, God was honored in that encounter because they all kept that relationship. We can see that there was a very deep relationship with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. Very close relationship, one-to-one -one relationship. But they were always grateful. They were not taking it for granted. But they were in gratitude every time an, offer, they, they, an encounter was there. They made an altar to glorify God. Genesis chapter 22, verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withhold your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is very key because I was making a study very deeply into Deuteronomy and why the Israelites have gone down under the subjugation of people. When the Lord is telling that you, are, you will be able to defeat your enemies, but all the promises, all the assurances, all the guarantees, all the prophecies are conditional. There is a part we have to play. When we walk with the Lord, we will always be at the top. We will, we will be always prospering. We will be in good health of body, mind and soul. The peace of Christ of us, all human understanding and situation will be with you. When we rebel, when we rebel against God, our priorities change from God to something else in the world. Then what happens? Somebody else, the ruler of this earth, will take over your life because you are opening a way for him to enter. And he is a powerful enemy. He will enter and subject, uh, subject you to that domination of him over us. We will be second class citizens. The Bible tells us very clearly. We will never be second class citizens. I was making a study when Christianity flourished in Europe, they practically conquered the whole world. Today, others are ruling even in the Western countries. Why? The rebellion, the continuous rebellion, continuous rebellion. This is the, don't look at the country's life. Look at each one's life. Who is ruling? What are your priorities? Set right the priorities. I am telling you very clearly, set right the priorities. This is the time of reflection. This God has given us enough and more time to reflect on our life and see how things are going. Don't blame him because in black and white, through examples, through the word and the guarantees and the life of people, God has very clearly showed us this is the way you have to walk. If you want peace, if you want victory, if you want blessing, walk with God and rest he will do it for you. So Genesis chapter 25 verse 5, all together Abraham lived 175 years. The calling was very clear. The calling was very clear. Understand this. I am giving you the example when we follow God, how he is rewarding his people. 
All together, Abraham lived a hundred and seventy-five years. Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. See, every I was making a study on each one of them, how they, how they died. One thing I was very sure, each one was blessed. Each one of them was blessed. How they, they have ended their life, seeing the victory, seeing the blessing. If you want that, not only wish, but start living that life in union with God. Through the word of God, getting, the, getting how to set right your life with God. Not through people, not through teachings, through the word of God. It has an eternal plan for each one of us. No to live as slaves and under somebody in fear and anxiety, sick and tired of your life. But when you trust the word, when you live that word, and the spirit of God guiding you, you will be victorious and be blessed. Yeah, Genesis chapter 28 verse 13, the Lord said to Jacob, I am taking another example. I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. See, he is a rewarder. I always tell people, he is not simply calling. Now, simultaneously, he is rewarding. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All people on earth will be through you and your offspring. I am with you and you will and I will watch over you where, wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. See, if you are in detail, if you analyze, you know that everything was fulfilled. Here is a word announced or pronounced. There is a prophecy coming over you. But when the vast majority of our people, when they receive a prophecy, they will think that automatically it will be fulfilled. But it will never be fulfilled, I am telling you. The God's plan at that point is this. I want to bless. I ask God's plan for everybody is to bless. When the choice is ours, when we are choosing him as our Lord and God and Savior, and when we decided to walk with him, his spirit is guiding you in your daily life, you will be reaching that destiny which God has planned. Then, after receiving that prophecy, you will live your life the way you want to live and rebel against God at every point, then you miss out. The, the ball is in our court. Don't blame God. Because we are detailed, the Bible-based teachings, we are analyzing in the life of the people, and I can boldly say that God is doing what he has promised. I can give you one more example. In January, we gave a talk about coronavirus, and God has given us a promise of the Spirit of God in fire. Now, literally, yesterday morning, I started almost 6.30, 7 o'clock, the call, practically 11 o'clock in the night. I could not even put down my phone. This today was slightly better. I'm praying from people from Australia to Canada. There are different timing, different groups. Families, priests, nuns, uh, people who are 80, 85, old people, young people, all type of people, we were praying. One thing was very sure, over that six months I have analyzed, not a single person has died, whichever part of the world it is. If you are faithful to the calling of the way, as the Lord, the teaching, the silent way the Holy Spirit lead you or silent way the Holy Spirit speak to you, when you trust that word, because it is His word, it is a God's promise, you are a tool in His hands to proclaiming the glory of God and to establish His kingdom, your calling, you are said yes to God. Then God will empower, God will anoint, God will give you the revelation. God will uh, uh, give you the empowerment and anointing to see that word is fulfilled in your life. Today, most critical cases, most critical cases, I was praying for a person of 85 years. 
now thanks to god he is out many many i can give you any number of examples hundreds literally hundreds congregations i am praying 20 people 30 people in a congregation being affected colonies families individuals but one thing i am sure at the moment that call comes in i know for certain i know for certain without any doubt without not to preach but to believe and i believe i believe every prayer that goes before the god immediately acts immediately acts very critical conditions after two or three hours people call back and say there is an improvement the person has been stabilized because we are faithful in that commitment to god in that calling whether it is a bit night whether it is early morning whatever time it is we are there because god wanted to stand with that family in a crisis and you must only know when you start getting this type of call only you will know how miserable our people are they simply do not know where to go how to go what to do absolute confusion absolute lost feelings absolute i can tell you very big people very big people all on a sudden they crash like a house of cards they simply do not know the people who make major decisions when they get sick their family get sick when the report comes in all on a sudden everything changes in a flicker of a moment because so much of fear has been put into people it is some sort of a death warrant for most of the people there is nothing to fear when they, there is nothing to fear there is nothing to fear there is nothing to fear corona virus is like any other disease i always tell people don't worry don't worry last six months i am standing before my holy god interceding and praying for people and none of them have died none of them i am speaking to the god chosen people none of them whatever may be the critical cases they said uh, there is no ventilator there is no issues we are in ventilator whatever it is i am not bothered about whether there are ventilator or no ventilator is available it is not my duty it is my god's duty to see that they are saved because we are interceding according to his holy promise and say and uh, we know for certain we know for certain not because after we have finished praying we know or after they have come out of the hospital the moment the first prayer first prayer goes into heaven and immediately god acts wherever they are whichever part of the world they are whichever hospital they are or home they are or whatever condition they are so move into that level that is why i want every one of you to be in that service of the lord the lord today the world needs enough we were asking 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 begging our begging list is so big before god it is time to stop begging he knows our needs and he will fulfill our needs be a flowing water not a stagnant water always receiving my list is there my list is there this is my list lord one list is over the other day i was praying for somebody in kerala the family is in very real trouble the father is an alcoholic they don't have a proper house to live uh, no job and the situation was in a, so many ways bad, very bad so then they call this is our condition we start praying they got job house was repaired father stopped drinking everything instead of thanking they are calling there is another list where are, when are we going to stop with that list before god i said you see you have been blessed you have given a big list of all these things that has happened why don't you at least say thank to that lord who has done it for you see this is our mentality our list is endless when we have that list i can tell you till our death list will be endless he will see to it that list is endless because we will never connect with god with a heart full of gratitude that is why i gave the example of abraham isaac and jacob they put an altar there a place of thanksgiving a place of memory a place of gratitude 
we should have that mindset then god will overflow with the blessing all your needs he will meet when you, not because he knows before we ask he knows all our needs now jacob uh, genesis chapter 35 verse 6 jacob and all the people in came to lust there he built an altar see the thing there he built an altar and he called that place el bethel because it was there that god revealed himself of him when he was fleeing from his brother see the uh, uh, gratitude when he is again going there to thank the lord moses did the same thing when you are bringing these people come to this mount and to thank the uh, thank the lord before the lord there was each one of them why they were blessed because you can see there was something in them different from the new generation what we see today because they were ever grateful ever thankful they knew that without him nothing is possible but with him everything is possible so let us move into that level of relationship like our forefathers learning from them because those wisdom are still wisdom i am telling you the modern wisdom fails the modern wisdom fails because it is more controlled by the evil one and the ideas that is coming from the powers of darkness that is why we have no solution to the problem what we are facing today whether it is economic problem whether it is a physical problem a medical problem or a flood or a natural problem we have no solutions but the one thing i tell you thousand and ten thousand may fall around but you are you your god is more than sufficient for you he will guard you he will protect you he will take you through and through through such situation this is what is happening today i am telling you see all this years we i am telling you from my heart cry i am crying to people and telling you see listen don't be beggars before god with the petty things seek the first the kingdom of god every other thing will be added stop start serving start loving start giving start uh, start doing something for the glory of god and his kingdom the world is hurting world is suffering don't look at your self what i can get what i can get what i can get how much are we going to store how much are we going to take from this world be realistic about the situation and start giving and let it be an overflow let be a fresh water coming in all the spring fresh everybody can come and drink that should be your attitude god appeared to him again and blessed him god said to him your name is take up see every time god is receiving that offering what we are giving thanks giving we are giving the worship and the praise we are giving everything is recorded in heaven i i know for certain today why why we are so confident because we know we have a very great deposit in heaven because of the faithful way we have walked before the holy god serving him loving him loving his people making all that sacrifices which is required to establish his kingdom service people loving and caring so a, a wealth which 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 nobody can take nobody can take so go and reach out to god because when he is calling each one of us he don't want anything to be left out from that calling that is why i am telling you but you will no longer be called jacob your name will be israel so he his name he has changed his name to israel and god said to him i am god almighty be fruitful and increase in, in number a nation and a community of nations will come from you and kings will come from you all those assurances guarantees and uh, you know everything was fulfilled the land i gave to abraham and isaac i also gave it to you and i will give this land to your descendants after you genesis chapter 48 verse 20, 21 then israel said to joseph see this is the final stage where all that promises how the i am taking the promise i am also bringing the end of those people that is why i am telling you our end is in his hand safe and protected and blessed 
That is why I am giving you so many examples. Then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers. Then Jacob called for his sons and said, gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in days to come. Then he called each one, he blessed. That blessing was very important. Very, very important in your life. Every form of blessing is of the elders is important in your life, including your parents, grandparents, and uh, people in authority. And you know, he especially blessed the Judah, and you know everything about Judah. We, uh, Jesus has come in that line. Let us look into Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. God calls Moses. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. God called to him from within the bush. See how many different ways God is calling. Different ways God is calling. Uh, he is now in the fire, he is calling him from in the bush. Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people of e in Egypt. See what happens. You are seeing the coronavirus and the, all the calamities that is happening, confusion that is happening, and the total helplessness and hopelessness we are seeing. But is God silent or God is not seeing? God is seeing everything. That is why each one of us have a duty. Start interceding for the world, for the people, for the, this country. This country needs a lot of prayer, I can tell you, because so much of venom and anger is put into the community through authorities. So much of poison is injected into each and every one. So we have to stand before God, the Holy God, to forgive. Because they simply do not know what they have learned, they are doing it. As Jesus prayed on the cross, we have to stand, not to point our finger and criticize them. Because they simply do not know who will drink poison when they know that it is poison. But who will inject poison when they know that they are injecting poison? Nobody will know. Nobody will do it. But because of the ignorance they are doing it, so our duty as believers is to stand in intercession. Lord, God can change their mindset into a different mindset of loving and caring and sharing for the people. Their people's needs may be concerned about by them. I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave man. Whatever may be, it is a family situation, whether it is an individual situation, every tear you shed is collected by God. The Bible tells us very clearly. If we are on self-pity, self-condemnation and guilt, if we are crying, I do not know. But what happens? Asking God, all that burden that is carried in us, coming as tears before the Lord in, a, in an encounter with God, that will transform you and change you and bring you into a blessing which you will never dreamt in your life. God is in charge, God is in control. So when you are calling out to God, when you are crying, every tear is collecting out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. See, God, is he changed? He will never change. Our God is the same as today, today and forever. He will never change. That is why today I can say what is happening in this world is very much in control. See, that, that gives us the confidence to stand in prayer for any person, any part of the world, for coronavirus to any hospital or home or situations, because we know he is concerned. He is looking for somebody to stand in that gap. He is looking for intercessors to be there, to save those Sodom and Gomorrah. He wanted only 10 people or less than 10 people. It is not the number game. It is the faithfulness, the prayer of a righteous person brings many things. Uh, James has written. So if you are a holy person standing before the Holy God and in crying out that one man's prayer is sufficient. Elijah was like that. 
So I want you to go from yourself to to a different person altogether as a child of God or a servant of God, whatever name you call it, an apostle or a prophet of God, whatever name you want to call it. But from yourself, you take your eyes to God and his kingdom to be established. So I came down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, out of, out of their land into a good, spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now go, see, see the thing. See, God is calling and every calling he is answering, giving us an answer also. I am not go, calling you to misery and suffering and uh, all, all those penalties or whatever that uh, things that can go wrong in your life. He is always calling his people to his abundant provision, which he came to establish. Though I have come to give life, life in all his abundance. These are not vain words. It's the word of God. It is God's promise, Jesus' own promise. So every time when he called his people, or any any person, he is giving them a promise simultaneously to them. What is his plan for them? But that plan they are not reaching. He has a plan. I am telling you, this is my plan. God is giving us that plan to us. But uh, are they receiving it? Receiving point is the problem. We start questioning. We start doubting. We start listening to somebody else. Our priority is changed and our confusion comes in and we lose the game. Look to him and him alone. Don't look at this side or that side. Focus clearly. My commitment is to my Jesus. And he will he is more than sufficient. He will carry me through and through in the, any situation. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? See, that is why. See, any person whom God has called, they knew they are not worth the calling they have been called to perform. But he is not looking at the weakness of person. If he is calling you, he calls Samuel, he calls... See, the Bible tells us how he called each and every one of them. And when he is giving you a call, eternal call, I will come to that at the end. To, to each and every human being, he is giving a call, he is always waiting. Like the prodigal son, father waiting for the prodigal son to come. He is waiting all the time. Today may be that day, tomorrow may be that day, but he will never get well up till our last breath, waiting, waiting, waiting to receive us into what? The blessing I told you, not to misery, not to ask the questions and put you into penalties and uh, into misery and suffering, into abundance and overflow. See, why, why we are not able to enter is because we don't believe. We believe the world system. We believe X, Y, Z who has a failure in life, telling us this is the way. It is not the way. I am telling you, people, I am telling you, people who are living in hidden sins, will never have the revelation of God. They may act and tell about revelation, this is the revelation. But I am telling you, they are not connected. Their holiness is important. I know for certain. Without holiness, God will never speak. Holiness is important. I may be a good uh, scholar to preach the great words with bombastic Oxford style English, but that is not the thing God is looking at. He is looking at a person like Peter, a fisherman. But uh, the faithfulness, he loved and served Jesus. He knew Jesus. Peter loved Jesus. Everybody knows it. Jesus himself asked him so many times, do you love me? Because Jesus knew for certain, Jesus, uh, Peter loved. So it is, he is not looking at anything else, whether simple love, anybody can, a child can do it, as a person on the bed can do it, just loving the creator, your God, your savior. And then rest is his work. Rest is his work. So Moses said, I, I am not the person, but you go. And God said, I will be with you. One thing I am telling you, every time I tell you, every morning he tells me, I am with you. I will take you through and through. 
every morning. When you have that encounter, start the day with God, continue the day with God, end the day with God, because he wanted to be with you. He is the Emmanuel God. He is in you in the Holy Spirit. He is around you as an Emmanuel God. See, he has given all the promises. Start trusting, start believing. Invite him into your life. Ask him to guide every step in the day. You do not add one more day in your life and just waste it away. Because every moment you utilize in this world will be your answer world before your God. I always stand before the, the same altar you see behind. I always stand at that morning before I start my day. I tell him, Lord, I am going to start my day. Be with me. Guide me. Help me to utilize every moment usefully and purposefully. At the age of 85, I should have been on the bed all the time. 20 people looking after me. But today, God has given me the help. Give me the, uh, given me the peace instead of everything is going fine. Don't think that everything is fine about me. But I have the peace of Christ that pass all human understanding. Not because things are not there. Everything is perfect. No, not at all. But I know he is in control. Without his knowledge, nothing happens. Everything that happens is for other people who love him. That deep faith in him. He will never forsake. He will never abandon. You know, all my needs, he is there for me. I have that faith, utter, under person faith. If it is more than 100, it is more than 100, 100, 100 and more, more faith, person faith in him. I trust him 100% without any doubt, without any doubt. He's more than sufficient for me. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. Since then, since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face, who did those miraculous signs and wonders. The Lord sent him to do it in Egypt, the Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his own land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. See that one who is called, he trusted, he left everything. He followed God and his God could do so many wonderful things, which I read out to you. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. Then let us see uh, calling of Joshua, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 14. The Lord said to Moses, now the day of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourself at the tent of meeting where I will commission him. So Moses and Joshua came and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. The Lord gave this command to Joshua. See each one, each one. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at yourself. Fear is a controlling factor. So many ways the evil one will try to limit you. But how God called every time I tell people, when God calls, he knows our abilities, our capacities. And this is the way he is speaking to everyone. Be strong and courageous, or you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them on oath, and I myself will be with you. Every The God's presence is more than sufficient. God's angels are all around you. God's blood is covering you. Holy Spirit is in you. What more? Much, much, much more than what he has even a promise to Joshua he is with you. Every believer, the Spirit of God is in you. The Emmanuel presence of Jesus is around you. The Jesus is in you. Father is in you. The Spirit of God is in you. And the angels of the Lord guarding and protecting you. Much more, we are much more well positioned than even Moses or Joshua, but you don't believe. Our problem is believing factor. We don't trust the Lord. We don't believe the word of God. So we are not able to enjoy that benefit. God is freely given to us through Calvary's death and resurrection, destroy the power of darkness, power of the enemy. He is under our feet. He is not on our head. We have to show him his place. He will roar like a lion. 
but he cannot do anything. He is under our feet. Remember this. Coronavirus has no power over us. I am telling you. Coronavirus or any other virus has no power over us. The fire of God around us. This is the prayer I am teaching everybody. When congregation, provincials and all call, I tell them, this is the revelation which God has given you. Once again, I am reminding you, it is a powerful factor which a revelation has come. The fire of God through the Spirit of God is burning all around the believer. If people don't believe it, tell them, see, through that fire of God which is in you, and around you, which you are not seeing, believing, claiming it, proclaiming it, or no coronavirus will come. I am guaranteeing you. Because all these six months I am trying out, experimenting. The uh, brother, you don't know, the oxygen level is going down. The doctors have given up. I said, there is one doctor may be giving up, but there is one who created him, he is not giving up. He will be out of the hospital. Or it, it will be stabilized. How we know? Because it is God. See, God called Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. I saw the Lord seated on a throne, and exalted, surpassed, calling to one another, holy, 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 is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Oh, to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the serpents flew to me with a live coal in his hand. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sins atoned for. Every time when Moses had an experience, Isaiah had an experience, Jeremiah has an experience, whomever God has called, they all had an experience. Today, it is not that experience, it is the trust. A visible sign was shown to them to accept that factor. Today, we accept that factor. Jesus is in us. Father is in us. Spirit of God is in us. We have been cleansed, purified, forgiven, sanctified by the precious blood of Calvary, the eternal word of God. Not by our works, not by anything else. When we turn back and repent and confess our sin, the blood of Calvary is more than sufficient to set you free and cleanse you, make you a saint. Everybody is a sinner, but why are we so confident uh, about our holiness because one thing we know the continuous flow of the precious blood of Calvary over us all the time all the time 24 hours the blood of Calvary the moment we turn to him that blood will flow from the tip of your hair to the sole of your feet cleansing you sanctifying you forgiving you accepting you and from the from the cross he will call you Brother, the Abba Father will call you son. Not because of any of your works. No one can be holy by our own works. However, how many times we confess by our efforts, we will never be holy. But the accepting the forgiveness of God, of the Calvary, the Jesus paid, carried our sins and trespasses. Accepting that fact as a faith factor, believing, trusting, Lord, you paid the price. But I will be ever grateful for the price you paid for me. I will be ever grateful and, and, and be in you and with you. That let the blood of Calvary may sanctify and keep me sanctified for all the sins I have committed. As you come here, ask the forgiveness of the Lord for sins you have committed. The blood of Calvary will keep you sanctified all the time. He, he, he will make us holy, not by our works, not by our righteousness, but by his mercy and his righteousness flowing through the confession you have made by the blood of Calvary, making you righteous. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said to, said, here I am, send me. See, this is the calling, this is the way God is calling you. 
here I am, we have to say, each one, that silent call from the cross, that unfinished work of Calvary, each one is looking at that sacrifice of Calvary. When you look at him, every drop of that blood is calling you to be a servant of God, to wipe away the tears of the people, hold the people in, the, in love and concern, holding their hand, not looking at anything coming from them, because your God is the rewarder. Don't look at people to reward you. Don't even look people to thank you. But trust the Lord. He is the rewarder. Don't look at people. Don't look at situations. Now VIPs, VIPs are calling because of the coronavirus. But I can tell you, I never keep any, any number. Any number. The other day somebody was asking, why don't you get these contacts? I said, no, there is no need. Absolutely no need. My God is more than sufficient. Why should I get these numbers? For what purpose? There is no need at all because my God is more than sufficient. More than sufficient. If he is not giving, I don't want it. If he is giving, I will receive gladly. So the call is for Jeremiah and all the things. But let us look how Jesus called his disciples. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me. There are different, uh, different uh, disciples have written these, uh, different things, but I have taken it from Matthew. But here he is telling, come follow me. Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. One thing I have noticed, when God called his disciples, everywhere they have written at once. They never thought. They never thought, if I give, all those people who have thought never followed God. The rich young man. So many others Jesus called. They gave some excuses or other. But though all those people who have followed him, he called. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus himself said, once you put the hand into the plow, don't look back. There is only one way. Once you encounter that great love, you will never be able to say no to him. I am telling you. Once you have a personal encounter with Jesus, that compassionate, loving, caring, one word we can call him love. There is no other word is required. When you encounter that great love, you are drawn into that, into that oneness. Any sacrifice is no sacrifice, I am telling you. Very price is no price. Because we are willing to pay any price in keeping that relationship, keeping in that love, living in that love, being in his presence all the moments of his life. David, David was crying. Only one thing I am asking, to be in your presence all the time. Such a beautiful experience. When you enter into his presence, into his love, you start living that heavenly heavenly place in this world itself. The circumstances may be totally different, situations may be totally different, but you know you are, you are in this world, but not of the world. Matthew chapter 8, verse 18, then Jesus saw the crowd around him. He, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake, then a teacher of the law came. So all those things. Jesus called also the same thing. He, everything. he did not even count the money. He just left.
by by his calling jesus gives life to dead people also see this is what we have to do today people do not know jesus call physically mentally spiritually emotionally from death to life he is calling and we have been asked to do it he called uh, lazarus i am not going into details i am going to finish it in 2 minutes jesus said to them take up the grave and all that thing jesus said if anyone is thirsty this is the thing jesus said if anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink whoever believes in me as the scripture has said streams of living water will flow from within him this water everybody should be able to drink you should be a living water for the glory of god not receiving and keeping it inside of you let there be an overflow of the living water of the spirit of god with the indwelling power of the trinity in god in you so that people can come and drink no not a sake to receive but to give and to be blessed by this he meant the spirit whom he whom those who believed in him were later to receive again you know the paul he called paul and gave him the same thing in the paul calling everybody hey, remember is this remember jesus parting word to mark jesus said to them this is the calling he is giving in his parting word jesus said to them go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation whoever believes and is baptized he be come in that will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned each one of us is called each one of us is called today you reflect on your life and you are calling each one of us he has never left anybody he will never leave anybody till the last man a man on this earth lives this calling is eternal it is in the atmosphere all the time it is a call from calvary after all the shedding of the blood who will carry my work who will carry establish my kingdom i am going but whoever is, is answering that call i will be with them i will empower them don't look at your position what you are but look at god who has called you and capable of making you what you are he wanted you to be a soldier of christ to establish the kingdom of the of god destroying the work of the destroyer setting the captives free that is our calling praise the lord